Yeah, um, it is actually in the OED, um, Damien. It, it it dates back. Uh, I, I'm not. I'm not seems, calling you. No, no. Right thankfully, now. no. And and me neither. Uh, but it's it's <laughs> it's it's, it's firstly down is a term which maybe its original use in the OED as an enlisted seaman. However, it is rare. But gobshite is in is in the OED, and it, it, it defines a stupid, contemptible, or incompetent person. As so, is as is langer actually, which was another word that was mentioned. That's also a stupid or contemptible person. There's a lot of uh, phrases for criticizing people for yeah. calling them stupid so a gobshite is actually a, a, a person who would have w- gone to sea originally yeah, is that what you're saying enlisted seaman now that's a, for US uh, usage so American usage and it is rare so it may not be in very very common marine usage in the states but it certainly recognises a term that belongs to that field yeah. so where did it come into Irish um, we don't tra- tracking the origins of words can be very very hard however the likely route for a word to get into a dictionary is that it becomes as I mentioned previously in regular use now it's where dictionaries decide this is they check newspapers printed media or reputable texts and see what's the pr- they run statistical analysis on it and say if it occurs more than let's say 10, 20, 30,000 times say right there's enough recognised uses of this word so it gets into the dictionary potentially gobshite was written that many times they may have chosen to choose or look at online fora or messaging boards and say well we need to add that in potentially as a, as, as a reputable source and it probably got in through there i don't have a date on when it came in i would imagine presumably mid 20th century but that's up i guess you know you're listening to dr chris mulhall lecturer in modern languages at wit and we're talking about entries to the oxford english dictionary suggestions such as gibbons chuddles and sittery yeah, situtery. Yeah. Situtery. The last one, pronouncing yeah. it right. Uh, so, well, if actually there's a phonetic. If you imagine sit out here, if you squash all that together, sit out here. Hurry. So it's a Scottish term that I think it defines. I'm not entirely familiar with Scottish dialect, <laughs> but it defines a, an, an enclave or a sort of a private space that someone can work in. Um, so that sounds, even the IE ending would suggest that it has potentially a French or Gallic background in it. So therefore, that means that's gone through language change, come into another culture as a borrowing. So a borrowing is when we take a word from another language to fill a gap in our own language so that we understand it. It becomes then stable in that. And when it increases in use, gets eventually into the dictionary. But those words, yeah, a lot of them that are coming in, Damien, you know, they are entered, they're reputable, they're there for sure. But whether we hear them day in, day out, there's a lot of words like we have a, a set of uh, vocab, our own lexicon that we use day in, day out. And we don't tend to stray from that too much unless no. we're dragged out of it. And I mean, some of the entries that are in the OED, there's some really interesting ones. A lot of them are around the area of Scottish words. And I think there's a story in that in itself because dictionaries, OK, they, they describe language, they're the, the, a linguistic object, but they also tell a story of what happens in society. I mean, someone has to write them uh, or, or I suppose did or now someone has to edit them. And like that person's bias and stereotypes and prejudices actually come to the fore in that. Now, they were way more obvious, I suppose, before the mid half of the 20th century. Now, really, tech, uh, dictionaries are driven by technology. So they edit and, 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 and choose what they want. But the key themes that came out in the recent OED update, I thought, were the idea of identity, the Scottish identity, particularly to the form the majority of words added from there. And that may be driven from the political identity of Scotland, that it's looking for it come more to the fore. The independence vote was five years ago, you know. Also, the because idea languages of, reflect a lot of social, political course, and economic change. Yeah. Yeah. That are going on. I mean, a dictionary is a, is a socially responsive and a socially sensitive object. It's, it's where the world is described for us in words. So we can't really separate the idea of what's happening in the world from a, a book that, OK, it looks static. And I mean, you're seeing sort of one in front of you there, uh, but it actually must move with the times, no matter how, how many volumes it has. I used to love uh, having a dictionary beside me and literally just opening a page, a random page someday uh, and picking a word that I've never seen. And so I said, OK, pick one word today. Mm. What makes a langer? Uh, I don't know. That's a vulgar term. Actually, it's, it's, it's a stupid or contemptible person. But uh, there, that's all it defines it as. Obviously, a part of the male body as well. So there's they, they haven't actually given any definition or usage. Normally, a, a dictionary will provide how to use it. But interesting with langer, and even on the online one I checked, and on the paper one I have in front of me, they haven't given an example of how to use it. Because it's predominantly seen as a cork, cork yeah, yeah, term of yeah, uh, abuse yeah, or endearment. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But it's really important that those terms are, are recorded because identity is wrapped up in all of that. And it's important. Dictionary is like almost, uh, you know, it's a, it's a status. It's a, it's a, it's a symbolic sign in, in, in society. So if your word is included in there, well, that means you're being recognised and you're being accepted. And there's a little bit of uniqueness to it as well. We won't obviously say any rude words. Yeah. Um, they may be rude today in five years' time. They mightn't be rude. But a lot of the words that are associated with uh, abusing somebody are to do with sexual parts of the body. Yeah. yeah. Why yeah. is that? How did that develop? I, I, I don't know. I mean, that may 
be, I suppose, that words that are taboo, let's say, that people don't use them very much in, in open discourse, might then get a second life in that if you're saying it's a little bit secretive and it becomes sort of denigratory in, in terms or denigrative in, in the way you des, de, de, uh, sorry, describe someone. So I would imagine that the transition from secrecy to taboo happens in that way. But it's very, very hard to track that, I suppose, Damien, because we, it's, it's like where a seed is sown and you see a, a flower growing. You know, you, sometimes you can't necessarily tell it's at the point of entry where it comes from. So tracking how it's been used initially is very, very hard. That's called the study of etymology. I know there are specialists in that area. It's not my own area. But dictionaries have to do a lot of work in that area because when a word comes in, it's like, where did that come from? Who used it first? And what, when did it start being used? Wittgenstein, uh, the philosopher, philosophy of language, we talk about how language is not just the word on the paper it's how it's said yeah. so somebody will say something to you jokingly but if they said it in a different tone of voice you could end up at two o'clock in the morning having an almighty row with somebody yeah, yeah sure i mean i i often bring bring around the point i mean that there's nothing accidental in language uh, every, lang every utterance is meaningful and has to be considered uh, so it's a considered thought. So th the whole idea of, of philosophy of language really is really important in how we use it. And I think we're in, in a space now where language has become so cursory that we communicate so quickly at the drop of a hat. And people say, well, I, I didn't mean it that way or sorry, I sent it really quickly. But there's still recognised utterances and statements that we must stand over. And language, I suppose, has become a very diluted model in that. And, 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 and we have to probably pay more attention to how we use it from time to time. You know? Give me... Um your favourite Waterford words. Give me the rolling of the R's. Well, I suppose I better declare on the Kildare origin. Kildare, man. But, yeah, but I like, uh, yeah, I like Waterford. Yeah, it's good. Neil Tobin described it. Waterford, uh, a real Waterford accent, as a grave injustice and oh. insult to the human mouth. Really? Is that a bit harsh? Uh, no, no, no. no, 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 no. no there's, there's a, the one thing about a Waterford accent is it, it, interesting to my own sort of role is that this, the sense of Frenchness in it is, is really nice. But I've always where does that come from again? From I, the French yeah, influence? Yeah, the French the influence, influence has stayed, yeah. yeah. And I mean, it may be evident, I, I, uh, probably, or maybe all the more in, in certain parts of town than other ones. But yeah, that's really interesting, I suppose, here that you can still hear a, a sense of French phonetics in the Waterford accent. The one that strikes me most, and, and I heard first when I moved down here, was Lac. Nice. Which I suppose is girlfriend or, or, or partner, maybe potentially. You'd um, never hear that before. No, I'd never heard and it. And it's only no. used in Waterford. Yeah, I, I, I would imagine if it's used outside of Waterford, it would probably create some sort of confusion. The French word lac, L A C, means lake. Now, it would be interesting if there was any sense of connection between those two, lake and a girl. I don't know. That's where you'd have to bind words and see what's been the transition from one, to one stage to the next for that. I, I don't know how is lac spelled. Is it L A C, L A C K? Could it be both? If it's LAC, it looks very much like it'd be French influence into it. And then the influences and differences within the county and the city. And South Kilkenny, Ballyhacken, Wexford, compared to Passage, Capaquin. Like, it's amazing in a small area. You could have within a, a 10 kilometre radius people just speaking differently. Yeah, and, and I think that's ingrained, actually. That, that may come ingrained within the Irish language. If you look at the Irish language, there's so many, there's such a rich diversity of, of, of dialects within it, and they still exist. And I, I know the state made attempts you know, in, the in 1950 with the publication to standardise the spelling and use of the language. But actually, that diversity still exists and should exist because otherwise we don't understand difference and, and identity is wrapped up provincially as well. Um, but yeah, no, that, that's, that dialect is really, really important. But I think also, Damien, another point that's coming through here as well is gender. Gender is becoming a very, very central topic around dictionary entries. Like ones that came in there uh, in, the o in the update last week were misgenders, to get someone's gender wrong. They also have a really, really clever use of the at symbol, you know, like the ones where you use in emails. Yes. So, for example, Romance languages will um, identify a word as being masculine as having O at the end of it and feminine as having A. So what they're using the at sign is now as, as like an A inside of an O. So you can have lat Latin, let's say, and the at sign, meaning it could be masculine or feminine. Or you could have Latin with an X after it means we're not saying it's either masculine or feminine. Now, someone's creating all of that. I mean, that, that function never exists in language where you would mix uh, a graphing, which would be a spelling and a symbol. We, did, we haven't really had much of that in the history of language, but now it's coming so much into the fore, largely because technology is helping us do that and people are being creative. So actually our thoughts about languages are really, really at a, at a peak now, I suppose, and the transmission of language is higher because of technology. But unfortunately, I mean, we're speaking less. And I, the, con the convention of actually stopping and standing, uh, stopping and speaking with someone seems to be reducing. You know, the way we communicate actually is very, very platformy rather than face to face. And I would wonder about the impacts of that over time. You know, what, what, will, what will be the eventual outcome of that? I'm glad you've come in to talk to me face to face this morning. Yeah. Dr. Chris Mulhall, thank you very much. We're going to come back to this item. And it's one of the suggestions we're going to have over the summer is uh, look at accents around Waterford, South Kilkenny, Wexford and develop it from that. Speaking of Wexford, we have a Wexford man coming up to talk about why they should vote for Fianna Fáil during the upcoming European elections.